Well, this marks some good news for at least some of you. I've seen in recent comments on some of the newest videos on this channel and some of the uh, thoughts being thrown my way on social media that were begging for me to bring back the Q&A video series. Ask me when I was going to bring it back. Well, guess what? Ta-da! Your wish is my command. So, bringing something else good back for 2016, this Q&A series. I kind of miss doing them. Um, it was one of those things, I think, where I got kind of bogged down with doing them because I felt the questions were kind of starting to get stale. And in particular, my answers, more importantly, were starting to get stale. And I just got tired of doing it for a little bit. So now I can take a step back. And I did. And I'm refreshed and ready to roll. So we'll do these Q&As. Um, every Monday is when you'll see them uploaded, at least for the time being in the future. Maybe I'll expand that to do more than one per week or I may change the day of it. But for now, you can usually count on it being every Monday morning or every Monday afternoon, so you probably want to start tweeting your questions each week, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, as you ask them too early in the week, honestly, they're probably going to get buried and they're not going to get answered because I'm not going to make hour-long Q8 videos. I'm just not going to. So, uh, again, Twitter is where I'm going to take the questions. At OTRS Central is the show's Twitter handle, and you will want to use hashtag OTRS Central because it'll make it easier for me to uh, sort through and be able to determine what are actually questions that are designed for the Q&A video series. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Remember, your questions could be both wrestling and non-wrestling related. I kind of like having a mix or a potpourri of all of them where it doesn't get too stale or too focused on one thing. So W. Rain Foster kicks us off. I haven't went through these questions, so I don't know what's coming. So I'll kind of be picking through them as we go and trying to answer some of the best ones or the ones that interest me the most. Um, your thoughts on David Bowie passing away? You know, it, it is probably wasn't that much of a surprise. I know there have been reports uh, going back a while that he was battling cancer, and uh, you hadn't heard a lot about it, but, you know, it never, I guess it never surprises. Um, but in terms of David Bowie, this is a guy that most certainly had a musical impact, had ad impact in terms of fashion, in terms of uh, other things from a cultural standpoint as well. I think it's a shame that we only talk about these people and their impact after they die. You know, that's one bad thing. Uh, but the other thing I think is kind of a shame is most people will only know him for his duet with Bing Crosby back in 1977, right before Bing Crosby passed away from a massive heart attack. Uh, that Christmas duet is a classic. It gets played on the radio all the time. You know, it, it, it's become an iconic thing for David Bowie, but his career was most certainly about more than that. Um, and then W. Rain Foster ask, also asked, do you think this is the year that Owen Hart goes into the Hall of Fame? Uh it would be a pretty good year, you would think, especially with, as you alluded to in your tweet, the Owen Hart DVD they were putting out. It would be well-timed. I think it's time. I do. I'd love to see it. I would absolutely love to see it, obviously, and I know a lot of you would, too. Uh, Keys 10 asks, what are your thoughts on CTE and concussions in the NFL? I guess I always go back to this when somebody asks me about this or wants my thoughts on this, is that... You know, my grandma used to tell me that football was a dangerous game and that she didn't want me to play it because she thought I would get hurt. And my simple thought process is, if my grandma fucking knew it was a dangerous game, Lord rest her soul, then how in the hell are so many people surprised that the repeated head trauma that you could suffer, both in terms of concussions, blows to the head, but the repeated, even when you're in the trenches and there's all these soft contacts of the head repeatedly over and over in practices and in games, year after year after year, could potentially cause some long-term ramifications or repercussions to your mental health. What the hell is this news? How the hell is this surprising anybody? You know, this is, to me... People not taking enough responsibility for their own choices and their own actions. You could talk about the NFL and safety matters and all of that, and a lot of that's probably true. But at the end of the day, people fundamentally have a choice to choose. They have the option to decide for themselves what they want to do or not do. You know when you play football that there are potential risks to your long-term health. But if you choose to play it, you choose to play it acknowledging and accepting those potential risks. You can't sit there and just want all of the re potential rewards that come with playing at the NFL level especially, or football in general, but especially at the highest level of all, and not expect to potentially deal with any of the consequences or long-term ramifications or repercussions of that decision. For me, it's the same thing as smoking. You know, I've smoked off and on since I was 18 years old. It's a dumbass thing to do. Sure, I can sit there and bitch about the tobacco companies making a deadly product that they do everything they can to make addictive. 
But at the end of the day, no matter what they've done, no matter how they've marketed it, no matter how they produce it, no matter how they sell it, whose choice is it? It's mine. I've had people telling me for years not to smoke, have family members die because they smoked. But if I chose to do it, then I chose to do it. But I also made that choice knowing the potential consequences and repercussions and my inability to quit is not anybody's fault but my fucking own. I have made the choices, I have made the decisions, and I ultimately may someday have to make my bed in line. And hopefully I have enough courage and enough internal strength to make the decision sometime this year especially to be able to quit this shit and kick the habit once and for fucking all. And I hope I do. But if I don't, and I never do, and it someday costs me my life, it's nobody's fault but my own because I made the decision. Nobody put a gun to my head to smoke. I'm the one that made the decision. Even though I knew the risks and I knew the consequences. It's the same thing to me. You can sit there and say, well, maybe you didn't know the potential level of damage that could be caused. Again, my grandma used to tell me, Dang, football was a dangerous fucking game. Don't play it. If my grandma knew it, how the hell do other people not do it? It's stupid and it's fucking ridiculous. All this uproar about it. It's just unbelievable. Michael Kapoor, which series did you have more fun doing? Reviewing WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, or Survivor Series? Uh, back when we had the Off the Rope Show channel years ago, doing the review series, especially WrestleMania with uh, uh, Tony, that was probably the most fun series for me. Is going back and watching all the WrestleManias again and then being able to sit down and review them with somebody like Tony. I enjoyed that the most. I enjoy going back and reviewing all the series and rewatching those shows, but it got to a point when you do those series too, you reach close to the end and you, you kind of regret doing it and you can't wait to just fucking get it over. So it starts to affect the quality of the review, the quality of the videos as well. But, you know, if you want to go back and enjoy my newer updated Royal Rumble review series on this channel, it's one of the play feature playlists on the channel page for OTR Essential. Make sure you check it out. Uh, Off Leather Wings. I know you're not an ROH fan, but are you familiar with Moose? I think you'd easily gravitate towards this style. Uh, are what you're trying to say? I'm just some big muscle mark? Are you suggesting it's a style because he's a black gentleman? Well, yes! I can get down with this style. No, I, I think I'm glad ROH has somebody like Moose. Not everybody needs to flip and kick and be 5'9", 180 pounds, somebody that I think I could legitimately give a go at. No, you need different people. So good for ROH to have somebody like that. Some point time, I'd put the fucking main strap on him. What the fuck do you have to lose? Uh, Greg Owens. Thoughts on Alberto Del Rio not getting a big push. I'm not surprised. They probably gave him a bunch of false promises and told him a bunch of bullshit, paid him a little bit more money, and ADR is like, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to go back. I want to make more money, you know, while I still can. So he got some of what he wanted, but I'm not surprised. I mean, because at the end of the day, ADR is just not that charismatic of a performer. He's just, there's something missing there. It, the, the whole package should be there, but it's just not. It's just not. Uh, and then he also asked, tips on impressing a woman you want. Uh, the safe thing to be would be to ignore the fuck out of her, then dog the fuck out of her, then tell her you want to put a baby in her. It's funny how that shit works. Now, women like men that are confident. Women like men that are sure of themselves, maybe not full of themselves. But they, like a, they like a man that challenges them, even though they hate it. You know, it's just like us as men. We love women that challenge us, even though we fucking hate it and we can't stand it. But boy, oh boy, when you get to that makeup sex, it's <laughs> gonna put a baby in it. But uh, try to keep yourself clean, wear a decent pair of shoes. You'll be surprised how many women, when they look at you and they give you the up and down, they will start here. They'll start with the eyes and your hair. But they will gravitate all the way down, and oftentimes the last impression you give is your shoes. You think I'm joking. You think I'm fucking. You think I'm messing. Just saying. Take from the guy that sold shoes for four and a half years as a full locker store manager. I know what I'm talking about here. Okay. All right. Uh, Beam of the Cash Man. Which NFL teams do you anticipate being the most improved in 2016? Uh, most improved, 2016. Um, hmm. I'm thinking for a second. I'm thinking for a second. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, potentially, even though I think it was ridiculous that they fired Lovey Smith uh, because I believe they'll get, what, a last place schedule out of the NFC South, and the Saints aren't all that good, and I, I think the Falcons have a long way to go before they become actually good. Uh, that could be a really improved team. 
Uh, who else could be a really improved team? It's just hard to know. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, because if they get everybody healthy, no notably Romo and Bryant, they'll be playing a last place schedule, and they'll be playing in the NFC East. If there's going to be a popular pick for a team to make a huge turnaround and go from top five pick to playoffs next year, it's probably going to be the Dallas Cowboys. Probably. I would think so. Um, let's see here. Andrew Harrington, do you see Randy Orton possibly being back in time for WrestleMania 32? I don't. I'd be surprised if he was at this point. Um, and even if he was able to, I'd probably rather save him for the night after WrestleMania to give you something for after WrestleMania. Uh, zero cool. Thoughts on Vince Russo nowadays? Do you think a lot of shit said about him is deserving, or do you think he should be given more credit? To answer the second part of that question, it's yes to both. He deserves a lot of shit, but I think at times he deserves more credit than what he actually gets. You know, he's a popular punching bag, but sometimes that's because some of the shit he says is dumb and ridiculous, but sometimes it's just become cool over the years to make Vince Russo a punching bag and not look at the greater problems of certain companies. You know, this is a guy who was important in his time, but the fact of the matter is he's created as many big stars in the professional wrestling business as I have over the past 15 years. I don't know why he gets so much attention still paid to him to this day. I don't know why uh, dirt sheets still live off of things Vince Russo says. I mean, you know, it's just like anybody else that's been involved in the business for years. Frankly, if I'm being so blunt and honest, they're all fucking marks for themselves and marks for the business. They're the biggest fucking marks at all. Uh, and, and in a lot of cases, they're the fucking biggest idiots of all. They're more out of touch than anybody. I mean, what the hell would Vince Russo know about today writing a good professional wrestling or sports entertainment show? He couldn't do either one of them. But to be fair, that's not just indicative of Vince Russo. That's a bigger, larger problem when talking about that wrestling sports entertainment bubble um, of the business as a whole today. I mean, there are people involved in TNA that think TNA is doing some really good things. There are people involved in WWE that think that WWE does some outstanding things. No, they fucking suck. It's terrible. Get over yourself. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, Everett Harding, what did you think of 2003 Hollywood Rock? Oh, I thought that shit was great. I enjoyed Hollywood Rock a lot. You know, this ain't sing-along with Rock. <laughs> Fucking The Rock in 2003. I think at that point in time, especially because he knew it was a, a limited window, when I go back and look at the Rock, you know, one of the things that I thought was always great about The Rock, you could just see how much fun he was having. But I thought, like, when he got to 2002, he stopped having fun. And I thought it showed a little bit. That's where he was trying to also go make movies at the time. He was trying to figure out what was next for his life as he reached the age of 30 and everything else. But 2003, in that short window, to me, I thought The Rock was having more fun being that type of heel than he had ever had in his career before or since. And I think it shows when you see him and you go back and watch it, he just looks like he's having a good time. He looks like he's having fun. And you best believe that shit resonates with an audience, and that shit does show. That's why I think so many of us gravitate to 2003 Hollywood Rock is maybe the best incarnation of the rock that there was. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, I guess we got time for one more. Sorry if some of you asked your questions earlier. I'm just not going to make super, super long QA videos. Uh, in the future, I'll try and go through and pre-screen some of the best ones. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sean McGlinchey4 asks a non-wrestling question. What did you think of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Okay, so I'm glad you asked this question now, and I'm glad I'm going to make this the last question of this QA video, because if anybody hasn't seen it and they don't want anything spoiled, here's your chance now to stop watching the Q&A Q video and go watch something else on this channel. Um, I thank you for your questions, and I thank you for watching, but, you know, don't complain that I spoiled anything for you. Goodbye. All right. So now those of you that wanted to have it spoiled or wanted me to talk about it or have already seen it, what did I think of The Force Awakens? Well, I went on New Year's Day to watch it with Ashley. We had a good time. I know I had a good time. And I think part of the thrill for me was that she thought going into it that it was going to suck and that she was going to hate it and it was nerd crap. And, and to be fair, it is nerd crap, don't get me wrong, but she thought it was going to be, like I said, a colossal waste of a couple of her hours on New Year's Day. But instead, she liked it, and I know she liked it because of the way she acted afterwards. Um, still can't get her to wear her hair like Princess Leia back from the 70s. God damn it.
That's coming. That's coming. Um, but in the meantime, you know, and the fact that she was actually willing to go back and watch episodes four, five, and six with me, uh, you know, after the fact, you know, I've created a Star Wars fan. So to me, that's the best thing of all, baby. Uh, but I was happy that there was a Star Wars movie. I was happy that it wasn't episodes one, two, or three. Because even those of you that maybe thought there were problems with The Force Awakens or didn't particularly like The Force Awakens, I remind you, there could be a lot worse Star Wars movies. There could be episodes one, two, and three, especially episode two, which I think is one of the worst movies that I've ever, ever, ever fucking seen. Um, in terms of what else did I like? Obviously, it was nice to see some of the characters of the past. It was cool to see Princess Leia. You know, the people making fun of how she looks. Fuck it, she's, what, almost 70 years of age? Lay off for a little bit. She didn't look that bad. I mean, yeah, her body didn't look great, but if you're looking to an almost seven-year-old woman to have a banging body, you got some fucking deeper issues anyways. Uh, it was really cool to see Han Solo and Chewbacca play such a big part in this particular one. Um, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I thought they did an okay job in terms of trying to set up a story for the next two. I'm glad in a way that they didn't overuse Luke Skywalker here. Uh, leave that to be a bigger deal for the movies to come. Uh, but now we get to the stuff that I didn't particularly like. Now, I'm not the type of Star Wars fan, as much as I love Star Wars, that sits there and will nitpick every single thing like I do, let's say, with professional wrestling. I'm not that type of fan when it comes to Star Wars like I am with WWE professional wrestling as a whole. That's not me. But there will still be things that at times I will look at that really will bother me. You know, whether it be plot holes or how a character is developed. You know, there will be those things that bother me. Um, things that bothered me in this movie. You know, I, I'll start off with this. I thought it was going to be more than it was. It was a good movie. I don't think it was a great movie. I still enjoyed myself, and I enjoyed going to see it. And I do plan on going to see it again in another week or two. Because I think that's important when it comes to movies like Star Wars. It's important to go back and see them multiple times because there are things you can miss the first time that somebody else you talked to about the movie picked up that you didn't. Then you picked up shit that they didn't, so you go back and watch it again and sometimes again, whatever. So I'll probably go watch it a second time. Uh, but things I didn't like. Uh, let's see here. I didn't like what they did in some parts with Kylo Ren. I don't know why they chose to unmask him as early as they did. I thought that was kind of dumb. Um, at first, they were making Kylo Ren out to be this fucking just badass monster dude. And I'm like, okay, I can get down with this. But somewhere along the way, he became this internally conflicted, sniveling bitch. And I didn't particularly like that. You know, Vader was Vader, and Vader was a bad dude. And it was clearly established in Episode 4, and Episode 5, and even throughout Episode 6 until the big climactic battle um, where the Emperor, Vader, and Luke Skywalker were there. You know, that's the only real glimpse that you get that Vader's not a bad dude to the core all the way. But here in Episode 7, you're already planting the seed that Kylo Ren is conflicted and, you know, all this crap. And I really didn't particularly like how they made um, the decision so early in the movie to reveal a major plot device in terms of Kylo Ren being uh, Han and Leia's son, Ben. Why did you have to do that so early in the damn movie? You know, even when he's talking to Darth Vader's mask, and he's talking about, he's asking for help from his grandfather, and so on and so forth. Why do you have to sit there and so early in the movie spoil that he's Han and Leia's kid? That could have left the possibility that it was Luke Skywalker's son that had turned to the dark side. Um, another thing that I didn't like about this was... The fact that you had that 30 years of time to account for and there really wasn't a lot of accounting for it. Maybe we'll get more of that via flashbacks in Episode 8. I hope so. Because I do think it's important that we get some type of background more than the brief, brief glimpses that we got into what led to, from the time Episode 6 ended to Episode 7 began, to things being in the position that they were. Um, you know, and then going back to the Kylo Ren thing, when it comes to the big climactic scene with him and Han Solo, excuse me, um, meeting on the bridge, you know, how much more power would that be if that's the moment where you find out or that you get the realization that indeed Han Solo is Kylo Ren's dad and with what happens that it would mean to me that much more if he didn't already have that uh, secret revealed an hour and a half before. 
I also thought it was really stupid how, you know, they briefly mentioned the fact that the Death Star used to be this, and then this planet that they had created was fucking this, and then by the end of the movie, it's fucking destroyed. Why the hell are you doing that? They created a fucking planet, and by the end of Episode 7, it's destroyed. It's just dumb to me. It's absolutely dumb. But the biggest problem I had with this was with the new characters, the new stars that they were trying to get over. Now, I was kind of okay with Finn. Now, I was okay with that character. I don't think they did a bad job with him. There could be some likability elements there with Finn for me. You know, I'm not one say I would be a huge fan of his yet, but I'm okay with it. I, however, am not a fan of Ray whatsoever. And no, before you sit there and interject and think it's because she's a woman and she's being portrayed as the lead, it's not that at all. I was okay with them going with one of the two leads, new leads being a female, because I thought it was necessary. I thought it was the right thing to do. But I don't like what they fucking did with her in this movie. She starts off as this scavenger on Jakku, and, you know, there's all this crap, and then she's the one that discovers BB-8, and they begin this whole journey and everything else. But then we get to the point where she freaking, she runs into Kylo Ren, he finds her, then he just freezes her in place, and she's like this, and he's like, I don't even need the droid, I've got what I need, and then he knocks her out, doing a little Jedi shit, or a little Force shit. And then he brings her on his ship, where he sits her down like he did with the pilot earlier on in the movie. And he's going to try and get information about what she's seen in terms of the map, where the droid is located. And he tries, and he tries, and he tries. And instead of extracting information out of her, instead of being able to get into her mind, not only is he not able to do that, she's able to fucking all of a sudden see into his mind. And then later on, she's getting this stormtrooper with this newfound magical power that she doesn't even fucking know or understand. She's able to convince him to sit there and release her and walk away and leave the door open and all this other crap. And then when you get to the end of the movie, this is what really, really bothered me and really, really turned me off to the Rey character and where they're potentially going with this. You know, the one thing they did with Luke Skywalker, I always thought really, really well in, that, in episodes four, five, and six, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi is they would give you those moments of glimmers of hope for Skywalker. He would have those moments. He would have those hope spots. But he would also have those moments of real vulnerability where you really wondered what was going to happen, if this was the end for him, if he had what it took. They did that throughout all three movies, Episode 4, 5, and 6, especially in Episodes 4 and 5. Now here in Episode 7, you've got Finn, who is a professionally trained stormtrooper who was taken from his family at an early age and basically programmed to do one thing that was fight and kill as a stormtrooper, a professional soldier gets a lightsaber and Kylo Ren is fucking him up to no end. All of a sudden, here comes Rey, no experience using a lightsaber, no professional fight training of any kind. Magically, here's the moment. This bitch has discovered the force is coming out of her cunt. And now she's not only able to handle a lightsaber, unlike Finn, she's more than handling herself. She's beating the shit out of Kylo Ren. She damn near killed him. Right there from the beginning. Now you've ruined the top villain for me. And now you've ruined the top hero for me. It's like the WWE booked this shit. Why in the fuck would I have any reason to fear a Kylo Ren when this bitch with no lightsaber training and no understanding of the power that she has in terms of her abilities with the Force is just able to sit there and fucking own him with the lightsaber? Not to mention she mind-fucked him earlier. So why the fuck would I hate him? He's the one I should have sympathy for. Because he's an emotional whiny bitch who has daddy issues, who wants to be like his grandfather but doesn't want to be all the way like his grandfather. He wants to be better. But now he's getting the shit kicked out of him by some bitch who's never even felt the force or understood it. And no Jedi training of any kind. Why the fuck would I hate him? I would root for him. He's the one that has to overcome the obstacles, and Ray is the obstacle. You want to know who fucking Ray is to me? It's fucking John Cena. There's no story here anymore. Why in the fuck would you have her be so strong and so dominant? It's okay to give her a hope spot or two. But a hope spot or two. 
At this point in time, based off of how badly she demolished Kylo Ren in the freaking lightsaber battle, why the fuck would it even matter if they had to find Luke Skywalker? Why the fuck would they even need him? Shit. Seriously. Who the fuck would she need any help? She can just save the goddamn universe all on her own. And that's what bothered me about this movie. Instead of making her into a hero that we could get behind, that we had reasons to cheer for, want to see do well, I can't stand her. And now you've given me a villain that I actually don't like, but I want to like, because it feels like he's the one that has to overcome all the obstacles. Two characters who went in really bad directions throughout the course of the movie, and the result I didn't like, and I can only imagine what's going to happen come episodes 8 and 9. But again, ultimately still enjoyed the movie, and the big reveal at the end of, you know, it was pissing me off throughout two plus hours of the movie. They're talking about Luke Skywalker all this time. I'm like, if he's not going to be in this fucking movie, then stop mentioning any fucking name, because I want to see the dude. But man, when you knew it was coming at the very, very end, it was a moment. It hits you. It's one of those things where it hits you, and it starts like here, right here in between your eyes, and it goes all the way down through the back of your side your spine and you feel it in your coccyx, your tailbone, it gives you that full body chill. That's when you know it's a big moment. And when Luke Skywalker is standing there and you know it's him and he turns around and it feels like a big fucking deal. That still left me <laughs> feeling good about the movie. That still gave me that good vibe at the end of the movie. It was still a good finish for me. So anyways, there you go. That's the Q&A series back in action. I'll be back again next Monday with another Q&A video. Remember, tweet your questions to at OTRS Central on Twitter using the hashtag OTRS Central. Um, make sure you check out some of the other videos on this channel. Raw Review will come up this week, maybe another video or two. And also make sure you go back and check out the old Royal Rumble Review Series. I'll see you later.